Hello, hi, welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Jason Chats. My name is Jason Newland, and uh, just thought I'd do a quick, quick update. Uh, I've been really ill. Oh man, I've been ill. Um, since <coughs> I'm not going to edit this, so hopefully I won't cough too much. <coughs> if I cough too much, I'll just stop the whole thing and I won't upload it. Uh, basically, I thought I had COVID, had a test, came back that I didn't have it. So hopefully, you know, well, either I have had it or I haven't had it, I don't know. Uh, people keep telling me, you can't trust the tests. Those are the people that said, you have to have the test. So make your fucking mind up, will you? I was so ill. And my hearing is 50%, I'd say. Both my ears, I can't hear properly. Um, don't know why I'm pointing to my ears. Most people know where the ears are. So it's very strange. It's a very strange old old thing, really. Um, feeling... This is the first day that I've felt anywhere near normal. For over two weeks <coughs> it's been nearly three weeks I started off with back pain so I didn't feel normal with that <coughs> excuse the coughing I've got a back brace on for my upper back to try and correct my posture I've had to take the medication again for the back pain today but I think a lot of the reasons uh, for the back pain is the amount of inactivity for the last week or so like laying in bed for days on end uh, and then just sitting down when I wasn't laying down so I haven't um, because before that I was starting to walk around a bit using the back posture uh, brace thing and my back was starting to feel a hell of a lot better with the medication, the anti-inflammatory stuff. So there you go. Um, so it's kind of almost self-inflicted, but not, if you know what I mean. The back. Uh, I'm planning on getting back to exercising a bit more. I mean, I've got exercise equipment. I've got a bike. Uh, I've got uh, I've got weights and stuff that I use, but I haven't done anything like that for a little while because of my back. Um, I didn't know what was wrong with my back because I've had lower back issues for years and years and years. And it's got gradually worse and it's awful at times. And I am on medication for that, like a prescription, uh, pain relief. But when my upper back, middle to upper back started to hurt, I started to worry. I think, is it lungs? Is it my chest? Is it physical? Is it neurological? You know, what what is it? And it was excruciating. It was the worst physical pain that I think I've experienced, actually. Because my lower back's more like a toothache. Okay, we all know toothache. Enough. Toothache's the, one of the worst things you can experience, but not when it's not in your tooth. If it's, if it's in your mouth, it is. A toothache in your leg or in your ankle, although it can be horrible, in my personal opinion, I find it easier to uh, remove myself from it, to move away from it. So being in my lower back, uh, there were times where I could almost ignore it. Um, relax and you know uh, it's not so easy and it's in your mouth you know so it's, I'm not saying that I actually have a toothache in my back I hope you understand I'm just as an analogy but 
but my upper back was shooting pains and poor oh, it was yeah it's really among among the worst pain I've had that kept coming and and it was when I moved so if I if I kept still in a position certain position it didn't hurt now that's no way to live that's you know if you can if you unless you have to some people that is the way they live and it's horrible and you know I feel for you and but if that's not the way I have to live then I'm not going to so I will keep moving and I will put myself through the pain if it's going to help if I can help myself which is what I kept trying to do I was stretching I've been doing loads of stretching exercises for months and months and months for my lower back and I started thinking have I overdone it because maybe I've um, ripped some muscles in my upper back in the process or pushed too far on my spine maybe overdone it and hurt my spine because until a couple of weeks ago I was doing exercises every morning in bed I was doing these certain exercises for my lower back I was doing um, crunches uh, when, you know, during the day I was doing all kinds of stretches and strengthening exercises that I'd learnt in order to strengthen and stretch my lower back but I've stopped doing those now so my lower back pain is well, it's, it's not so much painful it's stiff because I've not been able to do anything and my upper back although it started to get much better since I've been ill with this either COVID or non-COVID virus, I've had something uh, that my my upper back has started to hurt again. But now I've got this, the, the back thing on, it seems to be working. It just means I need to sort of adjust my position. But yeah, so basically I've had what I would say is like an ear infection, a chest infection, and gastroenteritis plus flu all at the same time. That's what it's felt like. And the chest infection wasn't too bad to start with, and that's the thing that's kind of uh, the last bit. Uh, I'm not coughing as much today as I did yesterday, and I'm coughing now. Now I'm talking about it, I want to cough. Before that, I was coughing more, but it wasn't it, the cough wasn't the thing that was the worst. The worst of it was my stomach, and I had a bad throat. I'd like felt like like throat infection. My ears. It all started on Wednesday. Really, it, I felt ill for a few days, just under the weather, but nothing, you know, nothing really major. Just like oh, feel a bit odd. And then a couple of days, like the Monday and the Tuesday, last week, because now Wednesday now, last week, Monday, Tuesday, I was waking up with earaches. One ear, earache on the left ear and then earache on the right ear. Alternate days. But then it went away. So I was like, oh, phew. Because I, I suffered with earaches when I was about seven or eight years old. And I had to have an operation. And I they found out that I was... Um, I had hearing issues. One of my ears was, uh, I was partially deaf in one ear. They didn't know, no one knew. And the the doctor said it was either, either I was just born that way or I'd taken a bash to the head, to that side of the head, which had caused damage to the ear. Um, Knowing my early childhood, it could have been the former, the latter, yeah, the last one. But it's no, it's no way knowing. Uh, plus, all kids just, just generally, even if they have normal childhoods, will take bashes to the head when they were a football, or if they fall over, fall down the stairs, fall out of a tree. Um, 
get chucked out of a helicopter, whatever, whatever normal stuff happens for kids. So I was a little bit worried because whenever I get earaches, that's when I think, oh, so I don't get earaches. I hardly get headaches. Um, I'm quite lucky that way. But Wednesday I woke up and I had an earache and I thought, oh, a bit weird. It was in my left ear, but then I got up and I kind of shook it off, got my ear off and shook it around, you know, aired, aired it out of the window, just boom, get rid of the cobwebs. And I was sitting there watching telly, eating my breakfast, and I was hearing something, like an echo, and I thought I had my headphones, because I've got headphones that I listen to the TV with when at night, or I listen to... Uh, I watch TV, if I watch like internet TV, you know, like movies and uh, Netflix or whatever, I use the headphones because then I'm not disturbing my neighbours because I, I, I'm up all night sometimes. So I, in between making podcasts, I might watch a, a Netflix thing or whatever, or YouTube. That's what it sounded like, like I left the headphones on. But then I realised the headphones were turned off and as my ear was echoing, my left ear was echoing what I was hearing on the telly. Very strange sensation. After it was fine, they weren't blocked. They were just, it was echoing. But it, it was, it, it, I guess it was blocked a little bit. It just, it was strange. Really, really surreal. And then... Wednesday, I thought, well, I'm not going to give up, give in to this. I'm just going to carry on like normal. Went out to the, well, I only went up to the shop to get some milk and stuff. But I felt so, so ill. I was like, really, like, oh, this is hard. I just don't feel great. And I ended up going to bed late afternoon, probably about five o'clock, and didn't get up other than to go to the toilet and eat minimal like a biscuit or a bit of a banana and some water that was it just whenever I was sort of really needed to eat something and I was in bed pretty much until Sunday and and through that I had as I said, like I've had gastroenteritis once. This wasn't as bad as gastroenteritis in a sense of the pain. I didn't have a huge physical stomach pains. I did have stomach pains, but not not on the level of when I had gastroenteritis a couple of years ago. But some of the other effects of gastroenteritis, which I'm not going to talk about, I had. And it was awful. And then... Um, <laughs> Put it this way, if I was in a relationship, I think it would end. I feel the washing machine's threatened to leave me. Seriously, and the toilet's already gone. The toilet's left. I bought flowers and everything, it didn't work. So I went through that whole thing. I didn't know what I was I didn't know what to do. So I'm here on my own. So I didn't luckily my friend who's also ill, but on one day, he wasn't ill, so he went to get some uh, day nurse and some medication from the pharmacy for the cold. Well, just basic kind of flu kind of stuff, so that's what I had. So that did help me get through it. Uh, it's lots of water, lots of water. And then I was also drinking cups of tea as well. So... Um, I tried to drink Coke because I had a few Cokes in there. It tasted wrong. Still does. I had a Coke yesterday. I had one. I'm used to drinking four cans of Coke a day. I had one bottle of Coke, which I didn't even drink all of it. Didn't taste right. Still don't. Um, so my taste's not there. My sense of smell. I don't. It's a bit weird. I have a weird. There's a weird smell. But it might just be me. I might just, just need to have a bath. I, I do need to have a bath. And the my hearing, as I said, after about, I think by the Thursday, 
last week, my hearing had gone. It's just like both ears clogged up, 50-50, you know, about 50% in my hearing. <clears throat> I On the television, to give an example, I have it at 20. And that's a nice, loud, like normal TV. That's kind of the level that I have it. I can have it lower, but that's a nice, clear, you know, sound. I had to have it at 58 to get to the same level with my hearing as it is. So I was very surprised at that. And then, luckily, with time, I've seemed to have improved. Last night was the first time I had any food, like an actual meal. But before that, it's just been toast. Toast, the odd sandwich, uh, I had a, fr a pizza in the fridge, so I had that lasted me a whole day, just bits of pizza and, and cups of tea and water, some orange juices that I had, uh, cups of coffee that I had in. I had a coffee, coffee, uh, coffee, coffee. I had a coffee, coffee every morning. Every a cup of coffee, coffee, coffee every evening. And I have one cup of coffee a day in the morning. Blah blah blah, and. Last night I had my first meal, and it was a frozen meal, but it's a lasagna, and I thought, yeah, that'll be all right. I can dip into that. I have a few little bits. No, I didn't. I didn't like pour it into my mouth. I wasn't. I wasn't hungry really. I was hungry, but not uh, expecting to eat it all. And I did. And I think I feel better now because of that. Because I've managed to, uh, I can now eat a whole bowl of breakfast cereal. Before I was eating breakfast cereal and I was just having a couple of mouthfuls and that was it. Uh, so now I'm back eating again from the looks of it. I haven't really got my taste buds back. I can taste, but it's not the same. It doesn't don't, don't, don't taste the same, you know. I can hear myself, but I don't hear myself how I normally do. So I don't, I can't hear how I really sound. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my ears to pop, you know, just so I can start hearing again. But I've never had this happen before. I never had like a whole week where my ears just gone. I mean, this might have been how my ear was when I was a kid, but I didn't know because I didn't know any different, you know. You don't know it, do you? If you've, if you, if you're born with ringing in your ears, then you're probably never going to question it. Especially if you're a little baby, a little kid, you might. But the chances you might never ever ask anyone. Like you might assume that everybody has a ringing in their ears. Um, so yeah, it's. I hope that my ears get back to being how they were and I got some of that stuff my friend got it for me you know the Optrex it's not Optrex uh, that ear thing that you put in squeeze in your ear and that to clear your ears out I did that but it didn't seem to make any well it didn't make any difference at all but I enjoyed the fizziness I like the fizzy like I like that feeling it's quite nice so I might do again a one again today because it was it was yeah it's nearly a week ago I think it was Thursday that I did it so maybe I can do it because I don't want to do stuff like that too often um, and that's it so I'm feeling a bit better I'm still not really feeling ready to make podcasts because I can't hear myself really I can't really. Uh, and it's that coughing, you know, it's, I know I can edit, I can edit out the coughing and stuff, but there's also, I can't hear background sounds. So when I'm making a podcast, I like to be able to make sure that the background's fairly quiet, but I can't hear the background sounds. Even people shouting outside, because some people do like to shout outside. 
it's just like a mumble, like like that, which is very weird, very strange. But yeah, that's it. I thought I'd just do a little update, up to up dates. Uh, what's going on with me? Uh, everything, everything other than that, everything's good. <laughs> um, it's weird. It's just been a weird, you know, two and a half weeks. My back. I mean, that was that was really getting to me. And then I think going out to the doctors, to the chemist or the pharmacy, uh, on the buses, all that stuff. On that journey, on that day which was the, I think it was the Thursday before, or the Wednesday or Thursday before, that's, I think, possibly when I caught my virus or whatever it was. And then it didn't, and it, I started to feel it ill in the evening, but just a bit weird. I put it down to the medication because it did say that it could make you feel a bit strange. Uh, it was the, I forget what it's called, but it's uh, for for pain but it's also helps with the alleviation of the stuff I don't know I don't know what the technical term is so but Wednesday man I tell you after Wednesday onwards ooh the only good thing, I say the only good thing, but I had a delivery on that day. And if it hadn't been for the food delivery I had, I don't know what I would have done. Honestly. Because I didn't even get that much stuff. It was just basic, a few basic bits and bobs, some frozen meals, some milk. A uh, few... <coughs> <coughs> excuse me just some basic stuff but I'd have been because I couldn't go out I don't know what I'd have done so thankfully I mean it might have been the delivery that brought me the, the illness you know because I use those old trays that are probably full of disease and illness you know I don't know how often they get cleaned Stuff's not in bags anymore, is it? So all the stuff is put onto these horrible um, rat ratty trays uh, that have probably got all kinds of plagues on them. Oh, I'm very positive today. But, you know, this they've tested. They've gone and tested. And, like, they're full of all kinds of, like, really it's filthy because you've got meat that's dripping blood onto them. Then you put dairy products and then you put un you know uh food like chicken that's raw next to chicken that's cooked the basic things that you learn uh in hygiene uh is it's a little bit worrying uh but that's all to do with the environment though isn't it so it's not having that's weird not having carrier bags that's the uh it's not okay it's not a choice anymore they just will not deliver them with carrier bags i'm happy to pay i always paid extra for the carrier bags and i will happily give the carrier bags back or reuse the carrier bags i don't chuck carrier bags away so when they come they stick it on my doorstep outside and i say move it i have to move it out i go into the hallway into the outside my front door I take my carrier bags with me and I have to put the stuff from the tray so I have to bend down which is not great on my back partly the reason I get deliveries is so that I don't have to carry stuff for, because of my back this is worse than carrying stuff in the supermarket because I'm bending over it like maybe 20 times and to put the stuff into the carrier bags is is it it's the most uncustomer friendly service in in a sense so i don't know 
you know, I'm trying to avoid going to supermarkets, being around people so that I don't catch this uh, lurgy thing, this disease. And uh, I had a test, a uh, flow test or whatever, and it came up negative. So, you know, people say, you should have a test, you should have a test. Okay, I had a test. Came up negative. You can't trust the tests. Everybody's a doctor. Have you noticed that? Everyone's a doctor now. Everyone, not everyone knows everything. Uh, so, yeah. If anyone's wondering why I don't look into the camera, I don't know where the camera is. I think it's there. Is it there? Yeah. It's there. I want to go. Um, still lots lots coming. Uh, I know that I've not done much on YouTube, really, as far as making uh, videos. I do share my podcast onto you, the YouTube the, the YouTube channel, but um, the plan, the plan, 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 blah, 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 is to be uploading some videos, video videos very soon might not be till january but it will be soon uh, i have a couple of i have two months of targets to reach for my podcasts so last month i reached my target of 600,000 downloads in october so that was my target november's 800,000 december's a million downloads so i got 6,669,000 Eight hundred and sixty-eight downloads, and the month before in September, four hundred fifty-eight thousand downloads. So that's why I set the target for October. I thought, yeah, I go six hundred, eight hundred November, and then go for the million in uh, December. So so far, I'm st- I'm on target. It's only the third day of the month, so there's lots lots to do. And I, I kind of figure, well, if I've got 669,000, nearly 670,000 downloads last month, and I pretty much lost two weeks of the, of the month, you know, I wasn't as active. I spent a lot of time in bed during that period. Still managed to get the view or the downloads so people were still downloading my podcast episodes, listening and stuff. So I figure on full throttle, sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Full throttle. Uh, maybe I can produce uh, more. I'll get a better month. And it started off, actually. Yesterday was a good, really good day. The day before was good. So... This is the third day, so all days, yeah, so far, every day's been good. So I will continue. Oh, yes. So thank you for listening. This is it. This is it. Um, I'll, keep, I'll keep you updated. And sorry about the coughing. Uh, I don't think there was too much coughing for me <laughs> now I'm talking about it. I think the word coffin makes the throat vibrate a little bit. Ah, it's a new technique. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Um, take care of yourselves. And remember to be gentle with yourself. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. <laughs>